Let us first uh, recall the statement of Nakayama's lemma and then prove it. Let A be a commutative ring with identity. and m be a finitely generated a module if i is an ideal contained in jacobson's radical of a this is jacobson radical of a such that I m is m then m is 0. Proof is a straightforward application of uh, the result that we proved in the last class. Suppose, I m is equal to m then you can think of the identity map uh, taking phi to be the identity map so phi of m is m which is i m so phi of m is contained in i m therefore by the result that we proved yesterday there exists we obtain an element, an element x in A such that 1 minus x or x minus 1 belongs to I and x m is 0. Right? Now, I is contained in the Jacobson's radical. I is contained in Jacobson radical. What does that mean? Yeah. So, we proved this characterization that x is uh, in Jacobson radical if and only if 1 minus x y is a unit for all y belongs to a. Right? This is something that we proved quite early in the course. So, using this what we get is therefore, 1 minus 1 minus x taking y to be equal to 1. 1 minus 1 minus x is a unit in a which implies x is a unit in A and x times m is 0. And that implies m is 0. Okay. So, What Nakama lemma says is that if you take a local ring and m to be a finitely generated a module, then I m can never be m 
unless m is 0 for any non unit ideal. Okay. So, there are you know uh, as a corollary of Nakai Malemma one can uh, uh, obtain or you know equivalent form of Nakai Malemma. Let us look at one or two different versions. So, this is uh, if I m is m then m is 0 uh, as a corollary first of all uh, let a be a be a local ring unique with unique maximal ideal m let m be a finitely generated a module if n is a submodule of m such that m is equal to n plus m m then n is equal to m. This looks like a strange form, but this is uh, this is indeed a very useful form when we try to prove certain equalities of ideals. When we have to prove that uh, if I start with an ideal i and an ideal j which is contained in i and you want to prove that i is equal to j, one of the methods is to prove that i is equal to j times m i. Okay. This is uh, you know one way of applying uh, Nakayama lemma and this has been useful very often even in the uh, even in the research this is being uh, used. So, this is a quick corollary proof directly follows from the statement. So, what we do is see we have to prove that m is equal to n and here we talk about some statement implies m is equal to 0. So, how do you convert it in that format? We want to look at some module right it should have a module structure. So, what kind of module? Well, I mean something is 0 will imply n is equal to m that is what ultimately we want. So, what should be the module that we should be considering? m minus n is a set, but that does not have a module structure. Take m mod n right. If you take m mod n and if you prove that n is 0 then I mean m mod n is 0 then m is equal to n. So, consider the module m mod n. Okay. To say that m mod n is 0, what is that we need to prove? We need to prove that for an ideal uh, contained in the Jacobson radical. What is Jacobson radical in this case? M, m. m itself. Contained in M, M times I mean cap that ideal times M mod n is equal to M mod n. M mod n. Now, let us look at. Uh, so, here it is the Jacobson radical. Let us look at what is M times M mod n.
by definition this is equal to m m plus n modulo m right. The quotient is precisely equal to m m plus n mod n. So, this is a general fact if you take uh, for any ideal i, i times m mod n this is same as i m plus n modulo n. Okay. This is uh, So, how do you verify this? Look at the definition of this. How, what is the definition of this? Let us, this is by definition set of all summation a i times m i bar, right. This is finite summation a i coming from coming from i, but this is same as summation a i m i whole bar, but now what is meant by, so this one will tend to express it as i m mod n but there is nothing like this right to say. So, if you look at this uh, okay, let me explain this because I feel that you are not very comfortable with that. So, it is better not to deal with uh, only with elements look at this uh, natural map from m to m mod n. Okay. So, I have this i times m mod n this is a this is a, a sub module of m mod n right. Now, what would be its uh, the, so this is the natural map what would be its inverse phi inverse of i dot m mod n. See, this is a sub module okay, and certainly this contains 0. So, inverse image will certainly have n there and this will certainly contain i m because we are taking inverse images of all elements of this form this is also we can say say this is same as the whole bar right. So, I have all the elements and n also here. Now, if I take any element here, so if I take any element for example, if I look at any element in this a i m i bar, what is its inverse? This the inverse of this is precisely it is not a it is not an element in here because there are you know there could be several elements that will be mapped to this one. What are the elements? If I take any a i m i plus n where n in n this will be here right. So, this will be the set 
summation a i m i plus n where n is in n or in other words I can write it as summation a i m i plus n represented this way and that is in i m plus n. So, what we have shown is that this is contained here. So, therefore, these two are equal. Is this clear? So, that is the solution for this exercise i times m mod n is nothing but i m plus n modulo n. Now, this is by hypothesis this is equal to m m m plus n is equal to m therefore, this is m mod n ok. So, by m mod n is 0 which implies m is this clear? We are taking m times m mod n by exercise this is equal to m m plus n mod n, but the hypothesis is that m m plus n is equal to m. Therefore, this is equal to m mod n, but then we have m which is contained in the Jacobson radical which is equal to the Jacobson radical with the property that m times the module is equal to the module itself. By Nakayama lemma m mod n the module is 0 m mod n is 0 which means m is equal to n. Is this clear? Another uh, nice corollary of uh, Nakayama lemma is in uh, talking about uh, something similar to a basis. Uh, see in the case of vector spaces over a, a field there is any minimal generating set and maximal linearly independent set they all have same cardinality or any two minimal generating sets have same cardinality right that is linearly independent we have basis and so on. But we have seen that in the case of modules that is not necessarily true there can be two different uh, minimal generating sets of different cardinalities, but if we are a slightly nicer situation than just a commutative ring then we still have something nice. So, let us look at this uh, let a m be a so this is a standard way of denoting when I say a m be a local ring it means a is commutative ring with identity and it is a local ring with m being the unique maximal ideal and m be a finitely generated a module. Okay. Now, If I look at then if I look at this module okay, m is 
exactly the annihilator of this module. The maximal ideal m is precisely the annihilator of this module, right. And therefore, this is a vector space over a mod m. A mod m, I mean it is a module over a mod m, which is same as saying vector space over a mod m, because a mod m is a field. Then this is a vector space over a mod m. Can we say that it is finite dimensional? Can you see that it is finite dimensional? Okay, so this is uh, one remark. Let A uh, M be a finitely generated A module and I in A be an ideal. Then we know that M mod I m is an A module at least to start with. Can you say something more? Is it finitely generated? Will this be a finitely generated A module? because m is I am saying that m is finitely generated a module, which means see what am I saying m is equal to I can find a set there exists m 1 up to m n in m such that uh, m is equal to summation and set of all i from 1 to n a i m i a i in A. M is precisely of this form. Okay. Now, if I take this as an A module, what are the elements? They are equivalence classes of all elements of this form. So, in particular, can you get me a generating set for this as an A module? m i bar like m m 1 bar m 2 bar up to m n bar will be a generating set for m mod i m as an a module right. Can you say okay, so this is a finitely generated a module. Can you say something more m mod i m is an a mod i module right. Can you say this is a finitely generated A mod I module? Will the same generating set will M 1 bar up to M n bar generate M mod I m over A mod I? Yeah. See, if you look at the multiplication here, we are taking linear combinations with elements in A. Now, I is contained in the I mean, I is equal to the annihilator of m mod I m. I is contained in the annihilator because you know there could be other elements that annihilates uh, m. So, I plus annihilator of m will be equal to the annihilator of uh, m, uh, m mod i m. So, I is contained in the annihilator. Therefore, if I take any element from I, those linear combinations will certainly become 0, it will vanish. So, if you take two elements which are same modulo i, 
their product and their summation etc will give you the same element which means the same set will generate m mod i m over a mod i. So, the answer here is yes. So, what have we proved? We have proved that m mod i m is a finitely generated a mod i module. So, if m is finitely generated a module, then m mod i m is a finitely generated a module. Not only that, m mod i m is a finitely generated a mod i module. Okay. And we have not only proved that, we have proved that if I take a generating set of m the same set from the same set I can get a generating set for m mod i m as an a module as well as as an a mod i module. The same set will generate. Okay. So, now let us return to our situation. So, m is a finitely generated a module. Therefore, m mod m m is a finitely generated a mod m module, but a mod m is a field. Therefore, m mod m m is a vector space over a mod m. Not only that, it is a finite dimensional vector space. So, this and m mod m m is a finite dimensional vector space over a mod m. So, it has a basis. So, let us take m 1 bar up to m n bar be an a mod m basis for m mod m n. Okay. So, what would though uh, you know one cannot can we expect this will generate m a priori there is no no way one can expect this you have a generating set for a quotient how do you expect that to generate the whole uh, module it need not. Okay. So, let us take let us uh, let n i be uh, maybe I will just write this m i be a pre image of of m i bar. So, when I say pre image in the natural map. Okay. Let n be the sub module generated by m 1 up to m n. So, my uh, question is whether n is equal to m or not. I mean to start with we cannot really believe that it is. So, let us see. So, I have this sub mod n is a sub module of uh, m. Okay. If m m is yeah. This will this will not contain all these m i right because there is yeah, yeah. huh. No, I am saying that if m, m 1 to m n is not a generating set, then it will contain m i and m i is not a generating set it will contain some elements in m m. So, that the image becomes 0 when we take it. 
there will exist some element no see we might have something in between n and m so anything here will become zero when you take quotient so this won't matter at all right uh, i didn't understand what uh, i am saying that uh, that is the generating set for n not m yes Huh, okay. Set, yeah. Then yeah, it should belong to. Yeah. So, or in other words, see what you are uh, trying to say is that if I show that this is M, right? That's precisely what you are saying, huh? The, and this is what we wanted to show. I mean, we if we show this, then we are done because of the corollary of Nakayama lemma, right? Very good. Now, is this true? Let's look at. So M mod. Uh, so this is N is a submodule of M. What is the image of uh, what is the submodule of the images of uh, elements of n in m mod m m submodule of uh, m mod m m generated by images of elements in n what is this what is n n is the module submodule generated by m1 m2 up to this will be equal to is m mod m m right because n is generated by m1 m2 up to mn so if you take its images here its images precisely the module or the vector space m mod mm now if i look at the natural map what is phi of n what is phi of n here if i take any sub module no how do you so okay this is a general uh, question suppose i have k be a sub module of uh, be a sub module of m so this is exercise K be a submodule of M, okay, and phi from M to M mod K is the natural map. If N is a submodule of of m then phi of n is equal to can you give me a precise uh, representation for this in m mod k it's uh, the exercise is very similar to the way we proved m mod i m n plus k mod k right we it is precisely n plus k mod k. So, therefore, let us apply that here what is the image of n here the image of n is so now let phi from m to m mod m m 
be the natural map. Then phi of n is equal to n plus mm mod mm. Therefore, but image of this is equal to we know that this phi of n is equal to m mod mm because images of m generates m mod mm. So, this is equal to this implies m mod mm is same as n plus mm mod mm. Or in other words, this mod this is 0, but what is this mod this, which is isomorphic to this implies m mod mm modulo n plus mm mod mm is 0, but what is this? This is isomorphic to m mod n plus mm is 0 which implies m is equal to n plus m n. By the corollary of Nakayama lemma this says m is equal to n. So, what have we shown here? We have shown that if I take an a mod m basis of m mod m m, this number, this set will generate m 1 m to m n, uh, sorry, this will generate the module m, the yeah, corresponding inverse images will generate m. Note that during the whole proof, we did not use that this is a basis, we only use the property that it generates, right. So, now suppose this and we take suppose this is a basis, basis means it is a minimal generating set, right. Now, what can we expect? If this is a generating set for m mod m m as an a mod m vector space, then we have proved that this is a generating set for m as an a module. Now, I am saying this is a minimal generating set or it is a basis. Then we can, expect it is also minimal. can we expect this to be minimal? Let us go through the proof. Let us see whether we can. Suppose this is not a minimal generating set. What does that mean? It means that there exists one of the m i's which can be written as you know which can be obtained from others. This is when do you say a set is not a minimal generating set, minimality is with respect to the inclusion. So, if this is not a minimal generating set that means there exists a subset which is a minimal generating set which is a generating set. So, I can find at least one m i which is written as a combination of others. So, let us say m n is written as linear combination of m 1 up to m n. Now, take its image into m mod m n the coefficient of m n will remain non zero at least that will remain non zero. So, you have a linear combination of basis elements that leads to 0 which is a contradiction. So, we have proved that if this is a basis for m mod m m over the field a mod m then this is 
a minimal generating set. We do not use the terminology basis because we do not have linear independence here. What we have shown is that this is a minimal generating set. Now, over a local ring, this uniquely determines the number of elements in a minimal generating set. Right. So, any minimal generating set will have this dimension of this over this number of elements. So, therefore, one can define the term we do not have dimension in the case of this we do not have the uh, definition of linear independence, but we do have minimum uh, a minimal generate cardinality of a minimal generating set. Okay. So, therefore, this is mu m this is cardinality of a minimal generating set, a minimal generating set. This is a well defined terminology when you have a finitely generated module over a local ring. Okay. This is one of the you know most important applications of uh, Nakayama's lemma. So, now let us uh, move on to study exact sequences. So, we saw I mean we have been dealing always with a homomorphism. Okay. Suppose I have a sequence of homomorphism m i to m i minus 1 to m i minus 2 be a sequence of homomorphism a module homomorphisms. So, this is I will denote this by f i f i minus 1 and so on each of them is an a module homomorphism. Okay. This sequence is said to be exact if image of f i is equal to kernel of f i minus 1 for all i. So, I can have uh, sequences of uh, long sequences of uh, modules and homomorphisms. Uh, Let us look at one or two simple examples. What is meant by this is exact? Kernel f is image, which means which is zero. For any module uh, a modules n and m, this is exact if and only if f is injective. Right? This is exact if and only if f is injective. Now, can you formulate kernel should be 
image. What is the kernel of this map? Whole of m. This, this is onto. So, this is exact if and only if f is onto. Let us look at uh, some uh, precise examples. So, this is uh, one of the most basic important examples in the area of commutative algebra. So, I take my ring to be k x y okay, and look at this uh, exact sequence 0 to a to a direct sum a to a to 0. Now, what is this uh, map? This is y minus x and this is x y. I am writing this the matrix. So, or in other words here a is mapped to a y minus a x and any r s is mapped to So, here okay, I am representing uh, as in the case of vector spaces and so on we always whenever we have to write this as left multiplication we write this as the vectors as column vectors. Okay, we are I am following the same convention. This should be yeah, R x plus S y. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. So okay. Very good. So if I look at this a to a direction a to a to 0 x mapping to x 0 and uh, a b mapping to b right kernel should be the image that is a case. sorry that is a particular case of this exactly so, here what, uh, what is y and what is x in this case, but here this is this is the ring a well this these two are slightly different here we are I am talking exactly about the variables not really y equal to n. So, uh, this is well this is uh, yeah, one of the natural examples I, I could have mentioned early before this, but this is you know this example uh, has much more. Uh, if you study commutative algebra further, this is one of the most basic example of a resolution of these two elements, the ideal generated by x comma y. Okay. This is something that uh, you will learn if you do an advanced course in commutative algebra. <coughs> okay. But this is you know an interesting example uh, by itself. This is these are variables y and x are simply variables. Case. No, if you take x equal to 0 the ring changes, ring is no more a. This is for any commutative ring, you take any commutative ring this, but in this case if you put x equal to 0 the ring is different. So, here one can easily see that this is 
I mean, this is an exact sequence. So, this is this is injective and this is surjective and kernel of this is same as image of this. So, this is I will leave it as an exercise. We will continue.